News Talk H20 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. This is the Chris Croc Show. And I want you to call in right now at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. That's our number. Uh, We have some fantastic news with Joe Biden uh, lying and or forgetting that he did. uh, It was his idea. He brought up uh, his son's death. And he could not remember it, even though he brought it up, and it was his uh, way of uh, apparently trying to figure out when something happened. And uh, he literally, on his own, on his, brought up his son on his own, like he always does, to be uh, like, I'm a gold star dad and I'm awesome. And as he did that, he had forgotten wh- when his own son was buried uh, and died, uh, Bo, and he had no idea. Uh, Robert Hur, the special counsel, did not ask about him ever. Um, and a lot of this is going to blow up in Joe's face in a major way shortly, based on what I will be telling you uh, that came out in the news today and, and yesterday. Uh, but first, Travis Kelsey uh, has now has had now uh, several red flags in, in like three or four days that are extremely concerning if you are Taylor Swift or her parents or if you care about her. Uh, her reputation, her, uh, her ability to be safe and prosperous and look good. Uh, it's all in je- jeopardy by being remaining around him because another red flag popped off. Now, before I get to that, I promise to give you uh, some of his history. I did not know this. I'm not a sports guy. I've always told you that. I never will pretend I'm a sports guy. I am not. I played sports for years, baseball, played football for two or three, even though I sucked, and gymnastics and such. But uh, I never, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not into it uh, much. But uh, so uh, let me uh, let me get into this. What we have is, uh, before we do that, though, I have the history that I learned, uh, not the whole thing, but most of uh, the, the the little uh, points, uh, the uh, important points to mention. When he was at, uh, I did not know this, but Travis Kelsey was at University of Cincinnati as a football player, and his brother was there with him, and Travis had gotten in big trouble, uh, apparently a lot, between weed uh, and other partying um, stuff and getting in big trouble, getting caught. I don't know if it was all with the law or just with you, Cincinnati. But listen, he was so bad in college. He was so troubled in college that he was kicked off the University of Cincinnati team. Obviously, he's an incredible player. And obviously, he was probably an incredible player at University of Cincinnati, which is why he is in the NFL. <clears throat> and a star player on a Super Bowl team and a critical part part of it. But he was kicked off the University of Cincinnati team, and the only reason why he got back on is because his brother Jason wiped his butt for him. Just like he did after the ref saying, you know, oh dude, you know, you you can't be doing that. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah. He's like, you crossed the line. He's like, oh, uh, I didn't listen to the podcast, but he, he and his brother have a podcast, and that was the headline from it yesterday. And um, so this is not something new with him. This man appears to have a problem with drugs and alcohol. This man has a problem uh, with uh, uh, breaking the law or at least getting kicked out of places and getting in trouble. Maybe not breaking the law. I don't know. Um, but he has a, he's had a problem with, with uh, marijuana, getting kicked off the team, which is incredible. That's a D1 school, isn't it? University of Cincinnati. It's got to be a D1 school, Division I. <clears throat> um so it looks like his brother Jason has been protecting him and keeping him uh, like a little baby, like baby Huey, from getting in trouble. Um, like he's a special person that's got massive strength and size. Anyway, his uh, brother begged the the the, uh, the coach and the team to let him back, and he they, he he saved him. They brought him back after he and promised that he said he promised he would make him. Uh, the brother said, pro- "Listen to this. This is what's insane and dysfunctional." Listen to this. This shows you how messed up this guy is, apparently. Uh, His brother begged and got him brought back and promised that he, the brother, would make Travis behave at University of Cincinnati and uh, give him another chance. They gave him another chance and um, got back on the team, and it was weed and alcohol is what he was uh, troubled with and going nuts with and got kicked off the team for. Uh, I don't know if he got kicked out of school too, but so this man is is troubled. That's just all there is to it. And what happens is, listen, and I'm going to be forthright with you on this. When you or I or anybody, any human being, 
whether they have problems like this guy does or not. When you get very famous and very rich, uh, particularly very fast, like NFL types do, you, whatever your issues are, it's like the same thing if you win the lottery, if you come into a lot of money, okay? Um, it, it brings out fame and, and wealth. This is the Chris Croc theory, and I, I don't believe it's a theory. I believe it's fact, but that's my opinion. Fame and wealth for almost all people. From now, Well, fame and wealth brings out the worst in you because you can get away with it. That's my theory. Fame and wealth, particularly when it's, when, when it's rapidly, but I think any, any of it, brings out the worst in us. Now, for some of us, the worst in us might be we become hoarders. We become stingy. Uh, or, or it might be we become too generous to the point where it hurts us. Uh, whatever it is, we might start partying and and get you know and we get away with it because we're so wealthy and stuff. But eventually, you get nailed and it comes out. So I my theory is that you win a lottery, you inherit a lot of money, you get famous and get a lot of money. It brings out the worst in you. And again, maybe the worst in you is just some habits that are not uh, you know huge, but it's like dude, you can't you gotta stop doing that. You know. Uh, so in Travis Kelsey's case, I believe it uh, has him go. On down a real bad path. And that's what we're seeing now. So my questions to you are, do you think that uh, Taylor Swift is going to dump him now or stand by him because of this new red flag? Um, and do you think it is another red flag when he goes out uh, within hours of the um, shooting at the parade after being sloppy, drunk, falling all over a place, and not being able to sing at the parade, embarrassing himself, then, then the, the the shooting happens. Everybody's in panic and praying and in shock. And then he goes out shortly thereafter, the same day yesterday, and he goes and parties and is taking selfies with fans at bars. Does is that another red flag to you? Between the uh, drunkard uh, singing on the stage and getting the mic yanked from him earlier in that day, and between the Super Bowl the day before shoving uh, his coach, or two days before shoving his coach and yelling at him on the field in front of the world. Um, and do you think this could pull down Taylor Swift's career pretty badly if she continues to associate with him, as I do? Uh, 800 288 WBAP is our number, 800 288 9227. Here's the headline from Breitbart. Chief star Travis Kelsey takes heat for partying at sports bar mere hours after parade shooting. Um, Daily Mail says fans slam tone deaf Travis Kelsey for posing and for smiling with a selfie with cops uh, as he enters a bar in the wake of the deadly shooting. Um, and um, just earlier that day, he tweeted out, I'm heartbroken over the tragedy that took place today. My heart is with all who came to celebrate with us and have been affected. You mean the world to me, Casey. But then he goes out and gets ripper and drunk again, apparently. At least goes to bars and takes selfies with people. Um, the uh, Daily Mail reported, quote, Travis Kelsey too drunk to speak as he held up by being held up by his teammates on stage at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. And then last is uh, one that's, you know, Fury from uh, Caveman Kelsey. Um, there's a lot of people that are angry about this and going after him in um, comments about all this. Okay, so that's what we have on that. You think he's, that's another red flag? You think Taylor's going to be taken down by him? You think he, uh, she'll end up booting him? 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Dane and Emery, we're going to take you right out of the box next Plus your call. We've got another person on hold, and then we got three lines open. I want to hear from you right now. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Your calls on this are next on the Chris Croc Show on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Then we're going to get into um, uh, Joe Biden's in big trouble. Special prosecutor Heard did not bring up the um, – uh, his son uh, or his son's death. It was Joe that brought it up and couldn't remember it on his own. And he, he either lied or he's so incompetent he doesn't remember that he brought it up on his own. Um, now it's going to be uh, coming to a head with public testimony by Robert Hur, and also the transcripts could be released so much Next on the Chris Croc Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Let's go. We got three lines open about Travis Kelsey getting rip-roaring drunk at the um, <clears throat> the Super Bowl parade 
and uh, uh, Mike taken out of his hand and ha- had to be held up. He was so drunk. And then the shooting happens, and he tells everybody on a tweet, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm with you. Uh, you know, we're in pain or whatever. You know, that kind of stuff. And then a couple hours later, he is sober enough to go back out, and he goes to a bar and he's drinking again. Apparently, apparently um, taking selfies with people as if no shooting was going on. Uh, so that's another red flag to me. Do you think it's another red flag to you? And does this make his outburst at the at his coach with the Super Bowl and then his over-the-top drunkenness at the parade and now this make it look even worse to you? Is this another red flag to you about this guy? And do you think Taylor Swift's going to dump him now or stand by him? And do you think this could pull down her career pretty badly uh, over time if she continues to associate with him? Because when you do that, if you're associating with troubled people all the time, eventually they either take you down with them or you, you know you get involved in something where they get arrested and you're with him, you start getting pulled down. Uh, I think that she's uh, punch drunk in love and she's going to uh, stay with this guy until it is real bad. I think this guy has potential based on getting kicked out of University of Cincinnati for drugs and alcohol and doing uh, bad stuff. Uh, that he, I mean, and I said this when he exploded on his coach and shoved him, this could, this guy could be uh, somebody that's got anger management problems and take it out on her over time, uh, give him enough time. Um, I don't know if he's physically abusive. He sure looks like he could be that based on how he treated his coach in front of the world on the Super Bowl game, Super Bowl game there. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Let's go to Dane and Emery. Uh, we have three lines open, by the way. Dane and then Phil will be next. Dane, you're on News Talk 820 WBAP. In Emory, you're on WBAP. Hello, sir. Good evening, Chris. How are you doing this evening? Good, sir. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just sitting here listening to your show, which I love. Thank you. And I think what he did with his shoving his coach and this wild binge of getting drunk and everything, getting, you know, I I don't I think it's a red flag and I first Taylor Swift I think he need she needs to drop him like a hot potato do you, step away because he's not going to get any better. Do you think that it was another serious red flag uh, by the fact he went out and was smiling and taking selfies as he headed into a bar um, hours after this happened uh, the 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 attack and then and you know presumably a little later on after he yes. sobered up. Yes, and uh, and uh, why is it so bad to you? I mean, it is to me, but why do you? Is that looks so bad? Why is that another red flag? I think I think it just gives it, you, you know because you know you got these young adult young kids looking up to these athletes, and uh, I don't think he's setting a good example for uh, the next generation. I sh- I think it shows he doesn't give a care about anybody else but himself. And, and that would that would that would fall singing. in line with why he shoved and screamed at his coach. It's all about him, a, a baby Huey, a big man that's got mm-hmm. serious problems that'll push and yell at you if he doesn't get what he wants. And then um, the public drunkenness is out of control, and it's all about him. I think it shows bad. His, mm-hmm. Don't and like I won't. You know, if I was there, I said, "Man, don't give her your day job. Leave the singing to." Uh, well, you know, people who can sing. I think the reason why he did that is because he was so drunk. He thought he sounded good, but he was so drunk he could not. <laughs> but he uh, he couldn't stand. He had to be held up, and they took the microphone. Oh, for, I mean, this is this, and then hours later he goes out and takes pictures after the with people after this terrorist or you know shooting or whatever you call it. It was gangland yeah. apparently. But appreciate your call, my friend Phil in Dallas. You're on News Talk Eight Twenty WBAP now on FM at ninety three three. Hello there. Yes, sir. Um, Unlike you, I don't really see necessarily see any red flags at all. It's just a uh, you know a guy in a party and and uh, done, did some stupid things. Wait a minute, Wait, did you say you're like me, or did you say that you don't agree with no, me? I said, I said unlike you. Oh, there you go. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You um, think this is all normal? I don't think it's any big deal. Okay, I think but making mountain out of a molehill. Okay, and the fact that he also got kicked off his team. Um, yeah, well, he's in college, so all this is just coincidence. He's not a problem person. These aren't red flags. You wouldn't mind your daughter dating him um, with all this. Well, FYI, you know, millions of women all over the world uh, love uh, Taylor uh, Travis Kelsey. 
Well, does, that's so, not what this is about. It's not with other people. It's about you. If this was uh, somebody your daughter was dating, it's about no you using your daughter. judgment about yeah. whether this guy has red I flags. No problem. I would have no problem with my daughter dating okay. him any more than anybody else. Okay. And, uh, you, and there's yeah. no red flags. All normal. Okay. Well, the, well you know, this, he didn't just get into the public eye. Uh, he's, he's become bigger because of Taylor Swift. But he's been a star for you know a decade. I, I don't doubt yeah. it. But well, it doesn't mean he's a person you want to be associated with or to be with permanently who, who could end up abusing you. Nobody's ever, in fact, this is the first time I've ever really heard anybody basically say a bad thing about Travis Kelsey. No, that's all over the news today, and it was all over the news after the shoving and screaming at his coach. Dude, it wasn't me. It was that, and I, I said it to myself, and I thought it already. We talked about it. The news had it everywhere, and they agreed, and people agreed, and now this, people are agreeing, and the news is agreeing. So it's not just well, me, well, and, well, and it's, coach, you might not pay attention ever. to the news, sir, well, no, as I'm, much I'm as I do. But the, not pay attention to the okay. news. Okay. And they talked to the coach, and the coach didn't have a problem with it. Well, I think he, it's he, because he wants to care for a star player and, and uh, protect him. Or maybe he just didn't think it was a big deal. Okay. Got a roll, brother. Thank you. I um, You can think that, but I think that's foolish thinking, and I think it's foolish logic, and I think that uh, this man is uh, trouble, and I think this man is self-centered, and I think he has anger management problems and alcohol and drug problems, and I think this is not good. And, I mean, you could look at the, the history of cowboys who do stuff like this, and then there's arrests, there's uh, uh, issues with spouses that are in the news, there's cops showing up. I don't think this guy's going to end in a, overall in a good way, but I could be wrong. I mean, I, I, it looks really bad to me. These are all red flags to me. Up next, I got some amazing news, your, uh, or some news that you're not going to want to hear, actually, and some other stuff that's interesting. Um, your tax return is... Is going to be a lot less this year, and it's not good news at all. And there's a bunch of other things to share with you on that front. Coming up next, we're going to talk to my friend, my sponsor, Randy Martin from IRSProb.com. Do not miss this. It affects you and your taxes and your money. Next. Hello, my friend, Randy Martin, my sponsor as well from IRSProb.com. How are you? Doing well, doing well. You doing all right, Chris? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. Very good, actually. Um, and uh, especially because I have a fantastic CPA. Uh, for me, named Randy Martin. Uh, here's a big one I wanted to get to it because right now our tax refunds, according to Yahoo Finance, is uh, says the tax refunds are almost 29 percent smaller this year, as what the early IRS data is showing. It is um, 1395 compared to 1963 last year. You know, money wise, mm -hmm. what's going on? Why that's a big dent? Yeah, I mean. Number of things, the brackets have, have changed. People are uh, there. There's the way that they calculate the withholdings on the paychecks has has changed. The the government's kind of allowed it to give people back a little bit more during the year in each paycheck. But you know, when you go time to to file your tax return, which is just really a reconciliation, you know, of, of taking all the money that you made throughout the year plus everything that's been paid in thus far. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so they're they're not getting back as much. I, you know, we want people to pay less in taxes. The refund is kind of disconnected from that. We really I, – I don't like to see people get too big of a refund. It just means they paid in too much during the year. Um, That's true. Yeah. Uh, Randy, uh, tax season uh, is in effect, obviously. There's uh, six key changes you must know, according to the Daily Mail. What are they, or at least to you, what are the ones that are notable to us uh, that you wanted to share with us? The, the biggest thing that I think is affecting the most people is the child tax credit changes. Um, they, they have you – know, every, every year around this time, the, the Congress is actually – um, you know, probably putting in a full eight-hour day, mm -hmm. um, you're trying to figure out, hey, which which of these tax um, deductions, tax credits, when, which of these are we going to carry over to the uh, uh, to the following year? And well, they just recently passed the tax, the child tax credit. That was a a really you know big deal. That's something that's very helpful for for any anybody, of course, with a with a kiddo. Um, the other items that they have is there's there's a new free a new free filing program you know for low income people that that could help out people in that situation. Um, 
there's you know, gosh, there's some other things that they have in there too, Chris. I can't remember. Everybody. That's okay. Yeah, no, I mean, if it's if it's if it was noteworthy, I think it was stuck out. Um, yeah. All right. Well, what what about this one too? As tax season season starts, IRS crime chief reveals the telltale signs that a tax preparer is a scammer and other top tips to steer clear of fraud. This is from the Daily Mail as well. Yeah. Yeah. We see these come um, – there's a lot of scams on both sides of it. We see a, a, a lot of people come to us, and they've gone to somebody to get their tax return done. Mm. Thought they were doing a good thing. You know, Maybe they got a good refund, and they think, wow, you know, well, we, we, we were really smart about that. We found a really good preparer. And come to find out, he just really loaded up their tax return with a bunch of lies and you know, claim oh, credits that, that didn't exist. And it really puts the taxpayer into a terrible situation – a lot of times it's not it's not really the taxpayer's fault, but nevertheless the IRS doesn't care who you know has to come up and cough up the, the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tax preparer in many of these cases are long gone. You know, they're kind of come and go places. Yes. Um, I'd be looking you know, if anybody's looking for a tax preparer, just look some, with somebody with some look for somebody with some longevity. You just don't wanna um, a newer uh, one or somebody that just moved into the area from out of state or something. Yeah. And there might be some good folks there too. I don't want to, I don't want to do any harm to anybody that, that's, mm-hmm. that's an honest, honest preparer, mm-hmm. but, um, that, you know, check out the reputation online, check them out. not just on their website, but you know, on other sites as well, see, see what kind of licensing, what kind of credentials that they have. Just make sure it all checks out. Um, there's just way too many of these, um, in, in the, the joke in the office is we call him the Screaming Eagle Tax Service. Yes, uh, like <laughs> that guy with the, the law hawk. <laughs> like that guy with the, he's a lawyer, but yeah. yeah, he went away. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. Something bad must have happened. I don't know what happened to the dude. Yeah, Maybe know. he hurt himself in one of those stunts, and he's in the hospital or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go to the slick willy of a tax service. No, no, Jimmy, slick Jimmy. I was thinking of that one. Well, right. they're both the same. All the same, uh, they win and we don't. Uh, can you boost? This is uh, another one that was very interesting. I wanted to ask you about. Can you boost? I'm like, this is got This is a Randy one. Can you boost your 401k by paying off your student loan? It's a new Biden scheme. Um, what, what What do you think about that? What, what do you say about that? Yeah, I, the paying off your student loan is the the interest is tax deductible on it, so that kind of helps us out. By, but how is how is that going to boost our four hundred one k? I don't think that's ever going to come. I don't think it's ever going to get come to fruition. I don't think it's going to get passed. I mean, I don't see really how those two could ever be connected. They're saying here some of the the uh, side notes: workers can now have their student loan payments matched into their four hundred one k. Changes came into effect Jan 1, January 1st, under Biden's Secure 2.0 Act. Three major companies offer it. Okay, so it's a company, Ch- Chipotle uh, and two other ones. So I guess maybe it's just a, uh, it's an incentive, but only if you have certain companies, huh? It's a Chipotle, Verizon, and uh, healthcare company, Abbott. Okay, but now there is something that came in with the Secure 2.1, 2.0, uh, mm-hmm. that Companies can help make payments toward people's student loans. Oh, um, that that was something that was new. And but it's I, I, it was part of the four hundred one k legislation because it's in that Secure two point act. But it, it, I don't think it's actually taking it out of the four hundred one k or anything. But yeah, uh, what we actually in our tax planning that's something that that we're really doing for people. You know, if somebody Dude, has a nice. if they have their own business and they have a student loan. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, why not have your business paying for your student loans? That you know, that's kind of a win-win, especially if you're you know a, a, a business of you know one person or a small business of two people or so. You know, offer that, and and the owners get to take advantage of it. So that's a great tax planning tool, and we've def- definitely been using that. My sponsor, Randy Martin from IRSProb.com. If you have an IRS problem, you need to call him. Um, I want uh, Randy. I got one more question for you, and this is a fun one uh, mm-hmm. to have uh, some fun with. Jeff Bezos. Will save over six hundred freaking million dollars, six hundred million dollars in taxes by moving to Miami. He um, is leaving Seattle after thirty years to go to Miami. And uh, what happened was, they say in twenty twenty two, Washington State 
imposed a 7% capital gains tax on sales of stocks and bonds of more than 250000 And Bezos mm-hmm. plans to unload 50 million shares of Amazon before the 31st, uh, Jan 31 of 2025. Posting those sales in Florida will save him at least $610 million. Talk to me about that. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, is this something, if you were his uh, CPA to the stars here, what would, would you support this? What are your thoughts? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. We, we see this. We have a, a, a large number of people, of course, moving to the Metroplex, and where they're, most of them are coming from is, is California. The Miami area, I was just out there for a tax conference in January, mm-hmm. and there the, the New Yorkers and, and folks from New Jersey are descending upon Florida, you know, like, like in droves, like they're, <laughs> they're coming, you know, to, mm-hmm. to the Dallas area from, from California. And my goodness, yes, I mean, they're getting, they're getting a raise <laughs> By moving, um, you know, j- just from the tax side of it. Wow. So, yeah, totally. Some of these states that have such high tax rates, and, and Washington actually doesn't, you know, up to just recently, it didn't really have a, an income tax. It does have wow. that kind of capital gains tax that they have. So, you know, for a West Coast state, they are they were pretty, pretty conservative pretty on, on, on the income tax, by the way. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we we've done a lot of planning and done a lot of cost analysis on how much people can save by actually moving to Texas. And from some of these states, the the savings is just, you know, incredibly large um, and, and makes it worth doing. You know, there's a, a, you know, the New Yorkers that are moving into Florida, we're, we, we've done those analysis as well. Hmm. And um, man, it, it is definitely worth for, especially for I mean, the higher the income they make, the, the, more of a savings they get. And so, yeah, Bezos That's, moving to uh, mm-hmm. to Florida was no accident. <laughs> so basically, if you were a CPA, you'd say that great move. That's what you should do. That's what you'd, you would advise him. Um, okay. Especially or, these guys that, that, you know, traveling is no problem. I mean, if he yeah. gets to Washington, he can be there, you know, or, probably on a What if it's uh, job. Texas would have been just as good, you think, to move to? Yeah. yeah. Must just Definitely. reincorporated from Delaware uh, to here. I don't know if you saw that. Um, he just reincorporated. Um, um, I'm sure you think that's a good move out too. Out of Delaware into Texas, yeah. Uh, that doesn't really um, the where your company's incorporated at doesn't make as big of a difference on the tax that you pay. It's kind of predominantly where your operations are located, and mm. um, but but yeah, still uh, um, uh, and there's there's savings there, and for at his level, it's probably probably enough to make it worth it, or he wouldn't have done it. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, Randy Martin, uh, how can folks from irsprob.com, how can folks get in touch with you, and why would they want to get in touch with you? Yeah, just just give us a call at 214-214-3000. That's 214-214-3000. Mm-hmm. Give us a call if you ha- or have or you or someone you know is having an IRS issue. That might, might be an audit. might be just a situation where they owe more money than they can pay to the IRS. Or they're just uh, looking to the future and saying, oh, uh, we'll be in that situation if I don't get some type of plan in place to save money and just strategically – um, you know, have plans put into place that, that save money. There's, there's about three different um, strategic plans that we use that save people thousands of dollars in taxes every year. And um, yeah, give us a call or look us up online at irsprob.com. Call is uh, 214-214-3000, you said? Yes, sir. Thank you, Randy. We appreciate you, brother, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Chris. Take All right, brother. There he goes. Um, I'll be uh, working with him again this year with my business and my wife's business, and uh, he does an amazing job. All right, now coming up next, um, nailed. There's no good way out of this, and Joe Biden's been nailed. Special counsel, her, special counsel, her will be testifying publicly in four weeks. Biden is caught between a rock and a hard place because of his own lie or because of his own. Uh, inability to be competent anymore, uh, which I think is like very likely. We'll get into that next. Do not miss this one. Uh, News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. Uh, Chris Crock show. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. And um, I think Joe Biden is going to be in some big trouble. And I think his campaign is going to implode. 
I, I mentioned when this first started coming out that the special counsel report her that you are what witnessing um, the Hindenburg, but it's a slow. It's a slow because if I'm not mistaken, it you know it floated down down to the bottom. It kind of started coming down and then and just blew up and imploded because of the gas, right? And you're watching a Hindenburg in slow motion with Joe Biden's campaign. It's not going to be obvious 110 percent like where it's done and everybody knows it, but they're going to pretend like it's not the case in the Democrat Party uh, within a month or two or three or four right before, and it's going to be way too late. Um, but uh, he will not, he won't relinquish it either. He will not, but he's in big trouble because he either, when he said this statement, here we go, let me play this for you. Remember this one, of course, big time. In addition, I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of... Every Memorial Day... Our Lady of... I don't remember. And what did he do? He brought up Our Lady of... It was four seconds. Pause. He doesn't remember so many things all the time now. He is uh, he has early onset dementia, and it's a slow fade process. The experts we've talked to on this show, it's a slow fade. You're witnessing it, uh, and it's you're getting progressively worse because the more you he hides a lot, and when he comes out, you're going whoa, whoa, whoa. But it's happening worse and worse and worse. Let's, let me play the rest of this real fast. fast forgive me. Well, day the rosary he got from Our Lady of. Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away or passed away. He does. In fact, he either is, when he, when he said that statement to the world, he was either lying, bald-faced lying, and he knew it, or he is worse than we think and we're being told by her. He's even more incompetent and unaware uh, than he thinks he is because he doesn't even realize that he did not, they, uh, they did not ask him. Several sources confirmed with NBC News that he was never asked the question. Robert Hur never brought up his son or his son's death and never asked about it. Number two, um, it was just confirmed today also by a second news outlet that you and I trust uh, even more, Fox News. So NBC News confirmed it with their sources a day or two ago, and now today Fox News confirmed it with their sources. It's official. Um, this man was never asked about it by the prosecutor, special prosecutor, her. He brought it up on his own to use his son as a as a crutch to uh, make you feel sorry for him and leave him alone. And he, he brought up, just like he brought up Our Lady of... Four second pause, and he never f remembered. Just like he brought up that and forgot, he brought up this and forgot. And now he literally is so incompetent that he forgot he that he was him that brought it up, or he's directly, overtly, insanely to your face lying. And that is why the two things are going to happen. They're going to put the nail in his coffin. And I'll tell you what those two things are that were just announced. Uh, one you've heard of, the other one was just announced today, and when and who will be testifying in public and how next.